scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Very touched seeing those who are sitting outside. The Lord will do us good in Jesus' name. Can we lift our hands to heaven and ask the Lord for a visitation yet again? Ask the Lord one more time for a visitation. Shabarus kapranda gabala kosa freske de belekusia. Father, breathe upon me, breathe upon me, breathe upon me. Let your word come with power, with fire, with grace. Breathe upon me. Breathe upon me. Elan sobran de gebere tuskia fala suprasta. Pray for the hearing ear, the seeing eye. The ear that hears, the eye that sees, the heart that receives. Is someone talking to the Lord this morning? For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. So there are a number of things in my spirit to share with us um, wherever we can stop this morning. Like I did tell us yesterday, this is a believers conference and the Lord seeks to bring us to the place of power, the place of wisdom, but that comes only through the channel of the word. Let me recap on a few things that I did say yesterday. Number one, I said how that there is a predefined pathway in the spirit there is a progression as far as the believers faith work is concerned please do not forget this that in god's economy you do not just start from nowhere into somewhere there is an exact starting point for the journey of the believer and we establish that that starting point is an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Remember that? That the moment you encounter Jesus, the Son of the Living God, you have begun your journey, your spirit walk, your faith walk. And that no matter how far you've been around the things of God, outside of and without an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the Living God, you have not begun the journey. Jesus called himself the way. He's the way that leads you into that reality called the truth that will finally minister life to you. So Jesus said, I am the way. Are we together now? In fact, he says, no man cometh to the Father except by me. So I told us that the way to encounter Jesus is captured in what we call the message, the gospel of salvation. Um, we did take our time to examine a few things about the gospel of salvation how that not every information about jesus translates to salvation do not forget this there are many nice things about jesus but there is an exact content that makes up the gospel maybe to add one more scripture in addition to that which i gave you yesterday you may want to consider first corinthians 15 
from verse 1 to 4. That is about the most concise explanation of the gospel by Apostle Paul himself. In fact, if media can help us, let's look at it very quickly. I'm just doing a very quick recap on yesterday because it's important to understand so that we'll be able to connect with what God is discussing today. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which ye are also saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Verse 3 now, reading to 4. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ, follow carefully now, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to scripture this is the gospel paul is saying when i came to you this was what i communicated to you that christ died he was buried he rose again on the third day according to the scripture hallelujah then i told us that um when you encounter salvation in what you call the new birth experience that that is not supposed to be the end of the journey hallelujah now respectfully speaking and i say this with every sense of honor i came from an evangelical background and so i have a great appreciation for those who have pioneered evangelism and the gospel but i think the limitation that came largely with the evangelical movement was that there was no system for continuity for the believers that god saved so there was a very excellent work in terms of bringing people to the fold but there were many believers who did not even know that growth was a possibility and a requirement and like i did tell us yesterday when you harvest something from the farm you don't leave it there it will rot are we together now that your encounter with jesus christ brings within your spirit eternal life but that is only the beginning of the journey. I told you that you will need to be exposed to three, a threefold force. Number one is the ministry of the teaching priest. According to Jeremiah 3.15, do not forget this. That the teaching priest has an assignment to work in partnership with the word of God and the spirit of God to begin your process of training, which is your process of transformation in order of eternal priority anyone who is not saved the first and the greatest need of an unsaved person is salvation beyond healing beyond a job beyond children any other thing you give to an unsaved person that is less than salvation was not god's ultimate for that person but that when salvation happens the next assignment is transformation are we together you can use this formula as a pastor to literally grow and mature the people in your church. There's no confusion about it. They, they can become something exact when you know what to do after what point. So if a new believer comes to meet you and says, now that I'm what to do? You can tell him the next process now is transformation. What is transformation? The name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. He says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. The formation of Christ in his entirety, all the, mul the multifaceted dimensions of Christ being formed, furnished in experience within that believer. Are we together now? That is very important. And I told us, watch this, that what you call destiny, according to ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 what you call destiny is not something you invent by yourself please do not forget that that you don't sit down and just decide or choose your destiny the bible talks about the concept of predestination are we together predestination means that in the mind of god he says here we are his workmanship i'll talk a bit about that created in christ jesus unto good works which god had before ordained that we should walk in them so 
God does not just scratch his head wondering what to do with your life when you arrive or when you become saved. No, there is a script that has been written already according to prophecy and according to predestination. Now, whether you will leave out that script or not is dependent on your cooperation with the will of God. Are we together now? It is possible that you can spend your life not living that destiny. And then you will find out that it is possible because of the extent of your faithfulness, God can add an assignment to you that was not in the original script of your life. Because someone who was supposed to play that role has failed and God can give his bishopric to another. It's in the Bible. His bishopric let another take. In other words, the mantle, the call and the assignment. So it's possible to see someone start maybe as a kingdom financier and end up as an evangelist and as, as an apostle because there is a way you can align through your diligence and submission to the spirit like you'll be learning you will be too available for the kind the kind of mandate you are carrying you would have developed yourself beyond that mandate god will honor you by adding another assignment and increasing your ranking in the spirit for instance stephen Stephen in the Bible. Are we Bible students now? Stephen was confined within the jurisdiction of the welfare department. But the level of alignment and submission to the spirit was beyond that level. And it pushed him to another kind of experience again. And I foresee that in this end time there are people who like... Eli I hope you know that there was no prophecy that Elisha was supposed to be a prophet. No. No. It was not in Elisha's destiny to be a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. The next prophet who would succeed the mantle of Elijah was supposed to come from the school of the prophets. That was the culture of the prophets. They would have the school where they were mentoring and raising certain people. But that farmer became so aligned, so available. In fact, he was the only one that followed Elisha even down to Jordan, Elijah, down to Jordan. There was nothing Elijah would do to drive him away. The prophets even said, I hope you know God is going to take your master now. So the guys were learning. Their prophetic insight was sharpening. They were not lying. Yet none of them received it. That was why it surprised them. When the mantle fell upon Elisha and he parted the Jordan, they said, truly, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. Are we learning now? I told us yesterday that the process of transformation starts with looking onto Jesus, not destiny. It as you look at Jesus and you love him and you press into him. Watch this now. The spirit of the living God who has been sent to guide us through the path of destiny will start putting you in a particular pathway. There are certain experiences that will start happening to you that you may think are unique to you till you start studying scripture. You will start finding parallels of your experiences. Are we together now? And then I did tell us yesterday that all the names you see in the Bible, Abraham, Esther, Isaac, Gideon, that these are not just names of men alone, but that those men embody different spiritual pathways that produce different kinds of believers. Are we together now? So when you mentioned the name Esther, you are not just mentioning a beautiful woman who married a Hazarus. You are also mentioning a kind of training that leads to kind of believer. Do you understand what I'm teaching you? When you mention Moses, you are not just mentioning a prophet who was a stammerer who led about 2.5 million people out. No, you are mentioning a spiritual pathway that leads to a kind of prophet. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger. Oh, our hearts always hunger. Hmm. So when you mention Mary, all that comes to the mind of an untrained believer is that virgin woman who donated her womb to become the mother of Jesus. 
but mary is not just the name of a woman mary is also the description of a spiritual pathway that prepares women to host certain visions of a revival are we together now listen listen you must understand this so that as you begin to follow jesus you will find yourself becoming like somebody in the bible there must be a name in the bible that your life starts becoming if it is the spirit of god that is leading you you cannot become nothing no so you find out that i'm looking like moses my training looks like moses number one is not even my biological mother who is raising me number two in the midst of hostility i am in an environment of hostility and yet i don't seem to be touched by spirit until the holy ghost opens your eyes you will just think i'm just loving god and going to church it is by discernment you will see that there is a formation there is a pathway and that is how mantles come to men watch this look at this do you know how people receive mantles they receive mantles by becoming exactly like the vessel that the mantle was upon before so that the mantle does not even know it has come on a new person this is the same principle practiced by witchcraft watch this if i want to bring a demon spirit here i will have to create the former habitat of that demon spirit to look exactly here so that the demon spirit can be transferred and not know that was why god prepared us to look like heaven now the holy ghost can live in us as though he's in the throne room are you getting this now yes this is a mystery in the spirit when a mantle comes and the vessel does not look like the mantle there it will not rest on you that is why the, the assignment is you must be prepared. So I want the mantle of Elijah. It is the training of Elijah that starts ship training you and chiseling you. By the time you become that portrait of Elijah through sacrifice, you don't have to pray for the mantle. It will come. So the mantle can keep, there are mantles that will keep going around Yola, but not rest on every, because there is a formation that mantle is looking for to rest. You see where our prayers in the body of Christ is largely a prayer of ignorance. Oh God, let it fall. No, it is not. The first people did not pray for it to fall. They only went through a school in the spirit. And as they exhausted a pathway, they found out that they were hosting superior dimensions of grace. Apostle, I want to be Naomi. The mantle of Naomi does not just rest upon you because you are a woman no Naomi is not just a woman Naomi is also a spiritual pathway Ruth is not just a young lady marrying Boaz Ruth is also a spiritual pathway look if you learn what I've taught you to be one of the greatest secrets you have learned that means every grace you see is available but there is a formation are we together now my assignment this morning is to show you how men are formed from the ordinary version of them to become vessels of honor that can hold certain mantles because nobody is prepared by default not even Jesus there is a pathway as you follow that pathway look at me women many of you make cakes and you make um cookies and you make whatever am i right on that when you get your flour and start beating it it looks flat but remember it can become any shape is that true but usually there you have something that looks like the shape you want that to become and you put it inside and force it to assume that shape am i right on that that's what i want to show you this morning how do ordinary men start that process of metamorphosis in the spirit how does an ordinary young man suddenly become a prophet what happens to him how does a young lady all of a sudden now carry power genuine power how does a young man who comes from a family full of poverty and failure suddenly becomes a trustee a treasurer of the kingdom what path did he follow what did he tell god what did god tell him 
Listen, when you understand this, my assignment is complete here. Because you can now start producing men and reproducing men of power. That means it does not matter who comes to you. Once they are willing, now you know the pathway. You can guarantee that in three, five years, you will produce a sign and a wonder. You will stop maintaining members in your church. You will produce witnesses and spiritual men. Are we together? Respectfully speaking, praise God. All right, thank you. What happens in many of our churches is that there is just a maintenance of membership. And I'm not saying this to insult, but the church was not supposed to be a place of maintenance. It was supposed to be a spiritual house of convergence and training where ordinary men begin to, through the ministry of the teaching priest, like I taught you, they subscribe themselves to an exact template. Are we together now? And that in an average church, after one, two, three, four, five years, I should come and see a formation of certain Bible figures. That means if I come, I should see a Joseph forming, an Elijah forming, an Esther forming. Somewhere in the choir, I should see a Jael forming. Are we together now? Yes. That's how you know a living church. When something about the lives of the membership starts becoming a parallel of the figures that you see in the Bible. The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning. So that we through faith and the patience, the comfort of scripture might find hope. But right now there is a blind claim of dimensions, blind claim of realms. Oh, I claim Elijah's mantle. I claim Moses' mantle. It doesn't happen that way. No. No. How do men transit in the spirit? How do men rise in the spirit? How do men prepare for the glory? When you know this, ladies and gentlemen, you will know why a few people in our world seem so powerful as though God just ignored everybody and isolated a few people. No, no. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Listen carefully. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Is that in your Bible? It says, and let any man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Are we still together? Then the Bible says, in a great house. Everybody say great house. A great house like a great church. A great house like your ministry. It says, beware, O man of God. That's why I said, please invite as many men of God. Because I'm talking to everybody, but my focus is largely on the shepherds. Because one man of God can represent 300, 500, 1,000 members. So if I talk to you well, I've spoken to 1,000 people well. In a great house, he's saying this is an information every teaching priest must carry. That the moment God sends members to your church, there are always four kinds of vessels there. Number one, the vessels of gold. Two, vessels of silver. Three, vessels of wood for vessels of clay no matter the church and the bible says some vessels are unto honor based on their desperation based on their alignment based on their press towards spiritual things whereas some other vessels are unto dishonor in other words don't be surprised when you find people disinterested with spiritual things don't let it frustrate you as a man of God and make you think you are not doing a good job. The Bible already told you in a great house, you will find these kinds of vessels. There are people, no matter what you do, you fast and pray, they have purposed in their heart not to be serious with the things of God or they have pegged themselves at a spiritual level and you cannot force them against their will. Yours is to just pray for them that God will open their eyes. You can choose as an act of your will to not be serious with God. He will honor your decision. But the consequences is that there is a dimension of glory that should emanate from the saints that will not come from your life or through your life. Are we together? Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, it says, is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. 
there is a dimension of glory that is supposed to be revealed from the saints and the bible says for the ns expectation listen carefully of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of god the bible says for creation itself was subject to vanity not willfully but by reason of him adam now the same who subjected him in hope and the bible says 21 it says because the creature itself will be delivered from a mystery called the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the saints hallelujah there is no territory that cannot experience revival there is no individual that cannot experience revival the key most times is we are not students of history we are not students of patterns we are not students of scripture and so or we study scripture without the illumination of the spirit and all we read there is just story but when you find out you see the truth is that the secret of the future is hidden in yesterday yesterday holds the key to tomorrow if you understand the mysteries and the patterns of the spirit because according to leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 this is the mystery that controls the manifestation of god's glory and he showed this to moses he said the lord instructed moses this is the thing which the lord commanded that ye should do and the glory shall appear unto you the glory is the end product of walking in keeping with certain spiritual patterns when you walk in keeping with certain spiritual patterns the end of that journey is glory hallelujah are we together so you won't believe i've not even started my lectures for this morning are we together wherever we stop we give glory to god so where do we start this morning let's start from ephesians let's do ephesians 2 10. the bible says for we are his workmanship let me start from there what does it mean to be a workmanship look up please do you know what it means the word workmanship means we are a testament of his artistry we are his investments we are the product of his intelligence when they say a man's workmanship when a tailor comes look up please when a tailor sews a beautiful dress you say that dress is the workmanship of the tailor that means you want to know how good that tailor is look at that dress when it is complete not when he's tearing it into pieces are we together now when the bible says we are his workmanship that means the finished version of you should reveal something about god that will be a wonder are you getting the point now that when people see god walking in you now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear what we shall be like but when you stay with god walking on course following your predefined pathway that the finished version of you must be his workmanship in other words that men will see you did the bible not say let your light so shine before men am i right on that matthew chapter 5 and verse 16 it says that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven in john chapter 15 and verse 8 it says herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples john 15 and verse 16 you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you the word ordained means to legitimize your operation that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain galatians 1 24 and they glorified god in me this is where we are going with all this journey that you get to a point where your life becomes a sign and a wonder in fact the bible calls us living epistles you know what that means your life should be a continuation of someone's bible study that when he closes his bible at home the moment he sees you you are that bible opened again he continues learning god through your life that what he did not understand in studying scripture your life becomes an explanation man can use your life as a tool to learn god we are his workmanship 
created in Christ Jesus, the Bible says, unto good works, which God had foreordained that will walk in them. Are we still together? Say amen if you are still here. Right, so, I want to show you five requirements very quickly this morning. There are five requirements that every believer who is being formed to become that vessel of glory must subscribe to, must submit to, must give yourself to. Listen to me. There is no, there is no negotiation. The moment you ignore these five mystery pathways, there is no possibility of arriving to become a vessel of glory. But no matter who you are, start that journey and walk in keeping with these five principles i give you a guarantee by the integrity of the, of jesus christ the end of your life will be a glory and a praise to you to him and to the nations are you ready for that pray in the spirit in one minute as god opens us up to these spiritual pathways someone is praying your life is changing there is a transition that is happening to you even in the spirit there is an ascendance in the spirit that is happening to you hallelujah hallelujah so jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 says stand ye in the way it begins by revealing a very deep mystery watch this that anything god wants to have continuity of he ensures that a pattern is left behind so that whoever wants to get that dimension of glory will follow that path too are we together and jeremiah picked this by the spirit give it to us thus saith the lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path wherein is the good way and walk therein it says and ye shall find rest for your soul so there is a pathway that turns ordinary men to vessels of glory vessels of power there are certain spiritual activities and spiritual practices that when the believer begins to engage in the end of it is the revelation of the glory of god in his life are we together in fact the bible puts it this way that he that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But that he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. That means everybody is a farmer. Everything you do every day is likened to sowing. And that there is a guaranteed harvest that comes. Corruption, a life of weakness, decadence, confusion pain subjugation by all kinds of demonic and elemental forces or a life of glory and dominion acts chapter 2 and verse 42 this is the first official revelation of the template that the early church followed to become men of power will you be able to read it can we read together? One to read. And they continued steadfastly uh -huh, in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. One more time. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So let's discuss The factors now number one that that which transits ordinary men into men of power into men of grace into men of ability in the spirit are we together now is a strategic and a systemic prayer life write it down a strategic and a systemic prayer life you want to evolve from the old you to transit into that which can host the glory of God 
are we together now the first defined pathway as revealed by jesus himself and revealed by the early church and revealed by modern history that everyone who followed the path that evolved them into men of fire and glory were men who had a strategic and a systemic prayer life i didn't just say a prayer life because many of you have a prayer life but your prayer life is not beneficial because it is not strategic and it is not systemic when you have a conditional prayer life you will never evolve into a man of power when you have a need driven prayer life you will never evolve into a man of power i don't have the time but there are four assignments of prayer in the life of the believer prayer itself does not do everything but there are four assignments of prayer i may not explain it maybe let me just list it i've done teachings on that you can get it the first and the greatest assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is for your growth and spiritual transformation that means the real assignment of prayer is not just for things to come to you no is for your spiritual evolution that you evolve in the place of prayer like a snake molting leaving its former self and assuming a new shape that's what prayer does luke chapter 9 and verse 29 the bible says and as he prayed the he being jesus the bible says the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistening unfortunately for most believers the scope of our prayer life is simply a platform to make petitions and for needs are we together and so once we go to pray we say things like father thank you you are the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david and all those kinds of things and there's nothing wrong with that father i've come again you see this issue i'm telling you give me rest give me this this issue of a child but you see the real assignment of prayer if prayer was just to receive things jesus would not need to pray because he was the word himself yet he immersed himself in prayer because prayer is principally a mysterious spiritual platform that can help men to activate their organs of interacting with the realm of the spirit one of the first key that you are excelling in your prayer life is a heightened sense of discernment your perception now begins to grow prayer this is one of the blessings of the ministry of praying tongues is supposed to be an opportunity for you to explore the riches in the spirit as you pray so when you invest time i said strategic and systemic prayer do you know why because when you study in acts chapter 3 from verse 1 acts chapter 3 and verse 1 the bible talks about peter and john are we bible students that now peter and john went together into the temple at the hour of prayer everybody say hour of prayer one more time say hour of prayer say routine of prayer when prayer is not systemic for you it cannot evolve you into a person of power there, there was the early apostles had what we call the hour of prayer that means their prayer life was systemic and methodical in our world we have what we call breakfast am i right breakfast in our world is within the range of 6 a.m to maybe 9 am i right on that and then we have lunch anything from maybe 12 1 2 3 4 and then we have dinner or supper so you can know that is your hour of breakfast your hour of lunch your hour of dinner and the bible says there is something called the hour of prayer the hour of prayer dedicated for your spiritual growth and your prayer so when it becomes systemic and you know that the first and the greatest assignment of prayer is for your spiritual evolution i promise to give you the remaining four can i run through it to you number two the second assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is for obtaining requests and making petitions the second assignment of prayer is for obtaining requests and making petitions the bible says in philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication 
with thanksgiving it says let your request be made known unto god am i right on that yes so the second assignment of prayer is as a platform for making requests matthew 11 mark 11 24 it says verily verily i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them number three very quickly the third assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is for spiritual legislation the ability to speak and create realities even in the place of prayer i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound in the place of prayer you can create possibilities the things that are not you call them and give life and give shape to them in the spirit finally the fourth assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is as a platform for warfare and prophetic intercession peter satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted use the same formula to strengthen your brethren are we learning i'm praying that as you are listening to me the holy ghost is doing something to your appetite for the word that your desire for the word that you will have an appetite to study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word listen the end time ministry will not just be a ministry of power it will be a ministry of power that comes after the communication of the word because christ manifests as the wisdom of god and the power of god not the power of god alone are we learning now so let's go back to our the first force the first mystery that i'm teaching you that makes and molds men to become careers superior careers of the glory of god S strategic and systemic prayer life look up please it is your responsibility to walk with the holy ghost and based on the schedules of your life to come up with strategic time periods per day per week per month per seasons that are dedicated to your prayer life for the purpose of transformation this is the responsibility dimension of power and grace are we together it cannot be a one-off rule for everybody because say for instance a young man who now begins to explore god say as a student on campus he may have a bit of liberty because at that point he's not married he does not have responsibilities am i together his responsibility is largely academic and maybe if he has a fellowship that is leading so he has a bit of time and he can create design a spiritual growth process out of that available time but fast forward 10 years after that time you are most likely a father a mother a leader maybe a pastor with a church you cannot use that campus template today it will not work you will be called an irresponsible person so you walk with the holy spirit and keep adjusting moments but that by all means you must have a systemic and a strategic prayer life i for one i have found the night periods into the early hours of the mornings as the best for anyone because all men sleep it is given for men to sleep are we together now my days are very busy and they continue to be increasingly busy but it is not an excuse to stop my growth it's not an excuse to stop my training there are many people who started dying when they started ministry because administration can distract you we are going to learn that in acts chapter 6 and verse 4 when they wanted to turn um, peter and the other apostles to become men who were just doing administrative duties they said no 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 there was a template that was given to us we are not apostles for nothing if we leave that and begin to serve tables there is nothing wrong in serving tables but something there is a consecration that is making us evolve we will not be able to arrive with that template and he said select among yourself men who are full of wisdom are we together and of honest report six and verse four acts chapter six and verse four says but we will give ourselves continually to the to prayer and to the ministry of the word 
Everybody say prayer. Luke 18 and verse 1, the Bible says he speak a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. It means be consistent with your prayer. James 5, 13, is any man afflicted? He says, let him pray. Let him pray. I submit to you that an attack on your prayer life is an attack on your potential for growth. And Satan will use legitimate excuses to distract you. Your wife, ministry, administration, your job, whatever it is, is your responsibility. 24 hours is enough to be able to squeeze out quality time and spend with God. Are we together? God is everywhere. But it does not meet with men everywhere. No. God is everywhere. But it does not meet with men everywhere. Even you as a human being. If you respect someone and you want to have an appointment. You will not tell him come and meet me at the junction. You can be everywhere. Above the messy seat. Above the cherubims. Below the messy seat. There I will meet with you. And I will communicate with you face to face. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. So, sometimes the Holy Ghost can help you and give you certain instructions from 12 to 2. Let that be the time dedicated for me. It can change. But then 12 o'clock, midnight, when others are sleeping, there you are in your room. Shabakatoskiata. Rando Seleke Parusiata. Blessed are you, O God. And for months, nothing will happen. You will keep praying. Or at least you do not sense that anything is happening. Lord, where is your voice? Where is the encounter I'm experiencing? Mm -mm, nothing will happen. One day, something is going to happen to you. You will come to the place of prayer like before. And while you are praying, Shalika Prandegebereko Siata, there he comes, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He will reveal himself to you in a way that only you can know. And he will place an unction and a grace upon you. He will measure a thousand cubits for you in the spirit. You will come out of that experience. You may not even know what has happened to you. Till you go back to the place of assignment and you will see like Moses that a dimension of the glory has rested on your face. It's others that will look at you. Do you know Moses met God and others did not have to go up the mountain. They had to look at Moses to have the same experience that God had. That God gave him. So we bow as we enter the throne room and we cast ourselves down at your feet for you are holy thou art holy there is none like you in your presence that is where i must be bella shalika parusiata and in that place of prayer, downloads of the prophetic blueprint of your destiny starts coming. One day in the place of prayer, you will now hear, I have called you and I have ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. You will write it. It does not make sense, but you will write it. Now your destiny is piecing together. One day you will go to prayer and the Lord will tell you that your anointing will move upon the stringed instrument. You will write it. These are all the pieces of the the, the puzzles that help you to be a carrier of the glory. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. And you will write it down. And then you will pray and pray again. Pray and pray again. Pray and pray again. Until your body begins to have a formation. And you see the mantle that was assigned to that body starts coming because the more the formation is is an attracting power
that is how spirits come into bodies because the bodies look like the vessels that they currently are in so they can leave that body and come into another body you subject yourself to prayer hey, 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 hey. you are praying ah, weeks becoming months Shaleke pakato prande gevereko siata, lembra taka siata. In one room, no no pedigree, no nothing, but a superior version of you is evolving from a family full of curses. Don't worry about the curses. You just submit yourself to prayer. In teka parukas kafra tegebeleketo siata. Ah, there is a fire that begins to be burning in your spirit as you submit yourself to prayer submit yourself to prayer the bible says he maketh his ministers wings numa his spirit his, 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 his angels wings and his ministers flames of fire that's what is happening to you as you submit yourself to prayer systemic prayer Strategic prayer. Embreketebekatoska Hello, Imadona. Hello, Imadona. The ministry of prayer forming you, shaping you, molding you. You are subscribing to a spiritual template that is making you become a kind, a type of vessel. You are attracting by your diligence, attracting by your consistency, a kind of mantle, a kind of grace and a kind of glory. In the name of Jesus. Now sit down. Sit down. Shase Bahasko Brande Geberetu Siakabra. Now listen carefully. Please, I want you to covenant with yourself that you are going to get this morning's teaching listen to it again by the spirit of god i'm revealing to you a very deep mysterious irrefutable formula i want you to listen to what i'm about to tell you now everybody please listen please let me have your attention there is a side effect to becoming prayerful that you may not know now that you have prayed i want you to listen the moment you submit yourself to prayer, you are in a position of a dangerous risk that I must tell you. Listen, listen, listen. Do you know why? Because the law of the altar is that the moment you submit yourself to prayer, watch this, your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit become alive and become heightened. And this, if Satan cannot stop you from prayer, the next thing that he does is to appear as an angel of light. That's why I said, listen to what I'm about to teach you. Many people's deception started because of the health of their prayer life. 
many especially those called into the apostolic and the prophetic ministry i will tell you most of the error the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that some in the latter time shall depart from the faith and they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons it is a risk to suddenly be open to the realm of visions it is a risk to suddenly be open to the realm of encounters because as a naive believer exploring the realm of the spirit anything you see in your vision can be told you that it is God listen carefully there are people who went up the mountain sincerely and came back with ordinances that were not from God there are people who sincerely submitted themselves to days and weeks of prayer and fasting and came back with spiritual templates from the realm of the spirit but not by the Holy Ghost. There are people who came back with their organs activated along the lines of the prophetic. Sincerely, they were not wrong people. When Jesus went to pray, who did he meet in the wilderness? Please talk to me. <laughs> when your Jesus went to pray I thought prayer should drive the devil but guess who was waiting for Jesus in the place of prayer after praying for 40 days with fasting I thought you would see Satan shaking and running away Satan was patiently waiting that means when you give yourself to prayer it's not only angels you are attracting the realm of the spirit because it's the prayers of the saints are like an incense that rise and there is a signal in the realm of the spirit there is somebody who is assuming that formation of the glory and satan will take advantage of your sincerity that's why i said promise that you will listen to this teaching again that is the reason why those who submit to the ministry of prayer alone are in danger did you hear what i said i've told you prayer is not everything prayer does act prayer has its ministry but many people have shut down on every other provision that makes for the growth of the saints and they have immersed themselves in a bid to access power the only thing they know and the only thing they may have done sincerely so is prayer and most of them have come with all kinds of erroneous things doctrines so someone will tell you in the place of prayer I went somewhere in the spirit I don't know where and I came back with a message I came back with certain things and you will see a semblance of power and it begins to graduate until it becomes like the doctrine of Balaam there are many things today respectfully speaking that have polluted the sanctity of the altar in the body of Christ today it did not come by the ministry of wicked men they were not wicked they were sincere people who did not understand the full scope of the training and they chose one aspect of the training and left the rest and the devil cast in on their sincerity and revealed things to them that have become a destruction to themselves I know people who prayed and prayed until they had mental problems have you seen people like that and even while they are mad they are praying in tongues it looks like a mockery to God eventually they will take them to the hospital and sedate them no genuine prayer does not lead to that but I told you there is a risk because it exposes you and you encounter all kinds of spirits and every spirit is speaking so you will hear a spirit from the realm of the spirit loud and clear and you say go and stand by the road and because your heart is already inclined to obey you will say yes lord and go and stand but you find out that the more you obey that spirit that formation of christ has stopped you are becoming like something else that is not christ this is where the next training comes right please the ministry of the word the second key that helps the believer to become a person of stature is the ministry of the word is God helping us I know the lion I know the lamb I know the lion I know the lamb 
I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. I follow the lion. I follow the lamb. Hallelujah. Listen. The ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer has become an age-long conflict which is more superior to which especially in the pentecostal and the charismatic circles now i'm saying this respectfully this is a believers meeting am i right on that so we have a group that may perceive themselves to be people of prayer especially the prophetic and the apostolic ministry then we have those who perceive themselves to be people of the word and sometimes the dichotomy is so wide that it almost looks as if there is enmity but the bible never created that dichotomy are we together jesus called himself the word but he said my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations am i right on that now i want to show you the roles that they play please look up jesus went as the word of god went in matthew chapter 4 jesus went to go and pray and fast everybody please look up please look up please look up please look up jesus is done praying everybody say prayer, prayer. one more time say prayer. prayer jesus is done praying and the next thing he sees is that satan appears to him am i right on that whether it's from the realm of his thoughts or it was a physical manifestation, the most important thing is that there was an interaction with this spirit entity, Satan. Are we together? And watch this. The first thing Satan told him is, don't forget that prayer produces power. Now in the place of prayer, you have power. Turn this stone to bread. In other words, convert that power to be an instrument for meeting your personal need. Forget about the bigger cause. That is the first there are three temptations every man must survive to rise i'm not teaching on that but those temptations of jesus number one is a temptation on your stomach manipulating the word of god and ministry to be used as an instrument of your stomach number two is spiritual laxity he took him up a holy mountain and said fall down spiritual carelessness for he shall put his angels charge over you the third temptation is a temptation of influence he took him into an exceeding great mountain and showed him the kingdoms of this world and their glories therefore and he said bow to me and i will give this to you but this is not what we're discussing now watch this satan comes to jesus and said turn this stone to bread look at jesus's reply it is he never said i have prayed it is help me it is why didn't he say satan are you not respecting my prayer and fasting do you not know the energy that has been generated there he said it is written do you know if jesus said okay satan that's a nice suggestion and turn that stone to bread his entire prayer life the spiritual investment he has made will be nothing simply because he did not know what was written then let me show you now the value of prayer added to the word satan said oh i see that you respect the word too so let's speak scripture now next temptation satan also said it is written he shall put his angels to his angels charge over you they shall bear thee up on their wings satan is quoting scripture now lest you dash your feet against a stone now satan is saying it is written you are saying it is written that is where the power of prayer comes in that gives you the discernment because if you do if you have scripture alone and no discernment that has been generated satan will come like the damn cell in acts chapter 16 and also join you in prophesying and you say they are saying scripture is someone learning now satan said it is written i know it too and jesus said no by discernment i know that even though what is coming out of your mouth is scripture but you are not of god hmm. 
there are many many people today who have the word but they just have history and literature in their minds because the power that that backs up the word that should be generated in the place of prayer is not there and so most people just become respectfully speaking historians and they just make the bible says ye search the scripture for in them you think you will find life and you will not come to me that the scriptures themselves testify of me but ladies and gentlemen do you know why the word of god is powerful because the word of god creates boundaries to your spiritual experiences the bible has a lot to say about the word of god for instance in colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 the bible talks about the supremacy of the word the supremacy of the word please give it to us i hope someone is learning something this morning colossians 1 16. let's read it if you can see it ready one to read please for by him the word now were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him do you know what that means that means even if you have an encounter outside this realm the word of god still has supremacy and you can use the word of god to vet every experience so an angel can appear to you and you can judge by the speakings of that angel if it does not reveal jesus and it does not lead you through the pathway you have a right to judge that angel by the word to say no this is inconsistent with the character of god most people do not have the word of god and it has destroyed them in ministry look at this for instance let's assume that this gentleman seated and this lady say they are husband and wife do you know as a man of god by prayer and through the prophetic i can see for instance that there's something wrong with that lady but how i will handle it now would depend on my understanding of scripture not my understanding of prayer if this is a man of god and this is your church and this is your wife and there is something wrong number one the bible says do not rebuke an elder in public so i'm not about to go and embarrass him and the wife because it will have an effect on the fold are you seeing how the word of god guides you now to administer power with wisdom many people through the prophetic have, have, have accessed graces but the word of god does not define the coordinates of their administering power and they keep they keep you know mismanaging power imagine an electric a high voltage naked wire on the ground will it do you any profit no you hold it and it will kill you but that same power can be channeled through a socket and you can charge something with it are you seeing now the word of god that's why the power of god resides within the word of god habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 the bible says in that sun like splendor is the hiding place of his power many people have not taken out time to be students of doctrine to be students of the word the bible says they gave themselves continually to the apostles doctrine please say doctrine one more time say doctrine now theologically speaking there are six foundational doctrines i'm not listing it for you there are six foundational doctrines that represent the believer's foundation if you do not have an encounter with these six doctrines building you are building upon shadows you find that in Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 1 and 2. I'm not going to repeat it. Just you go and study it. Six of them. Foundational doctrines that build the believer. Of doctrine of baptisms, repentance from dead works. The Bible lists them. Six of them. That means when you begin to grow spiritually, these are the foundational doctrines that you must learn. Are we together? why is scripture important because it helps us to understand the ways of god the ways of god the ways of god the ways of god why is scripture important because it can open our eyes ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds 
and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation are we still together now yes acts chapter 20 i believe and verse 32 or, or thereabout it says and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified among them that are sanctified i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified everybody say the word one more time say the word say doctrine one more time say the word say doctrine the course curriculum that builds a believer to become a witness is called doctrine it comes from the latin word doctrina it means a predefined body of knowledge that makes a student to become something exact are we together in my example yesterday remember a medical student from year one to the final year has a body of knowledge that he must learn are we together so when you call somebody a doctor you mean one who has exhausted that body of knowledge and has been vetted and accredited by a council am i right on that yeah doctrine as a man of god your concern is to come and teach god's people doctrine now let me tell you this you don't go and teach doctrine in a crusade ground and sometimes when you have a conference like this two three days you are you are short of time but as a pastor with your members you are not rushing anywhere so you take the time and teach don't teach members as if you are teaching in a conference you are not rushing anywhere they are there with you largely for years or for a lifetime so you take time methodically line upon line precept upon precept and let me tell you this when it has to do with knowing god our knowledge of god is infinite but when it has to do or the knowledge of god is infinite but when it has to do with raising believers to mature the body of truth that you communicate to them is finite there is an exact body of truth that you teach believers and then recycle it again and recycle it again so as a man of god your assignment is not newness it is freshness hmm. papa hagen spent his life teaching on faith and yet you will not listen to any of that message that looks like the other what what i think the pressure especially that the priesthood ministry in our world has today is there is such a itch to bring newness because it looks like i've taught on prayer will i teach on prayer again i've taught on fasting i've taught on the word of god i've taught on giving i've taught on the kingdom what else is there question a professor who has been teaching in the university for 35 years say in the faculty of medicine or architecture what has he been teaching is it true that he has been teaching the same thing is it true that he has been teaching the same thing <laughs> faith comes by hearing and hearing faith comes by hearing and hearing faith comes by hearing psychologists and educationists teach us that at the initial point of communicating a thought less than 26 percent of it is truly assimilated by those who hear so forget that members shout and say yes they are not getting anything most times you will need to repeat it with diligence and seriousness members are masters of flattering you they will comment unnecessarily and walk out and believe me that 26 percent is even for a serious student To the point that after jesus himself mentored the disciples he said when the spirit of truth is come he will remind you again is it not in your bible he will because the way you are now chances are excellent you will forget he will bring back to your memories everything i have taught you say amen, amen. that's why we thank god for technology now that can help us capture teachings that you listen to it again and as you listen to it you will hear something you did not hear even if you are the one who preached it you will hear something you did not hear and god can join seemingly unconnected thoughts together for you that no one else will hear in that teaching everybody say the word 
one more time say the word so i've taught you two agencies now in the making of men to become witnesses to become people of glory number one strategic and systemic prayer number two and when i talk of prayer you know that i also mean prayer with fasting hallelujah yes fasting is beneficial spiritually fasting is beneficial nutritionally are we together number three hmm. if you are learning say amen You want to become a man of power you want to become a man of grace the third is called corporate fellowship write it down corporate fellowship is another mystery hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 corporate fellowship hebrews 10 25 charges us not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together is that in your bible as the manner of some is but exhorting one another so much more as you see the days appearing listen to me if you want to become a man of power a man of grace a man that evolves into a vessel of honor you cannot ignore the place of corporate fellowship the convergence of believers together for the purpose of mentorship for the purpose of learning and for the purpose of growth this is very important you may have heard me teach that kingdom community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. Every believer must have a company of believers that you are connected to. This is very important. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Is that in your Bible? Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. The Bible says it is like the oil upon the head of Aaron the priest that comes down from his head to his bed, down to his garment, his skirt. The Bible says, for there God hath commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. No matter your personal work with God, there are certain dimensions in your dealings with God that cannot happen to you alone. It will have to happen under the corporate anointing. Is someone learning now? While they prayed, the Holy Ghost said to them, separate me, Paul. Is, is that in your Bible? While they prayed together. Let me tell you the truth. Even if you encounter Jesus in a vision, he will still lead you back to his church for the continuity of your growth. So don't say, I don't need anybody. I don't need any corporate gathering of believers. It is a spirit of the Antichrist. It is deception. Are we together? Standing alone, you will not be able to do much, I promise you. Read Bible history. Most of the believers that were alone, they died early. They could not stand. The strength of many believers was when they were together and they returned to their company. So you comfort one another. How many of you have come to church very tired, almost giving up, and somebody just raises one song? And while other people are just looking, you are the only one crying because that song is healing you from something. God placed an anointing. This is why worship leaders in church must be serious. In fact, everybody in church, workers must be serious. Pastors, don't just deploy skill alone. Deploy spirituality and consecration and sacrifice because what they are singing is not a special number what they are singing is ministering life somebody's life depends on that song so you are supposed to lead a song you don't just stand up and then quickly check your list of songs and come and stand and you are the only one dancing you see that it's not ministering to the people it's very clear that you are, the, you are there's no life communicated when you stand to minister you reveal your secret place whether to minister in word or to minister in worship your communication is a window into your secret place and men can look and say what is this one now even those who are not spiritual can know you are raising a song of worship and people are sleeping there is nothing touching them
Everybody say fellowship. Question. You have come for this conference now. Look at how many things you have learned. Does that mean you do not know God? Does that mean you do not have the Holy Ghost? Imagine that you were not here. There are some of you, what you are listening, you are learning now, maybe new. Some of you, he's refreshing you again. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let me give you number four. Are you learning? Show me a believer who follows these pathways. And I show you a man who will become mighty. Let me recap. Number one, that you must submit yourself to prayer. Submit yourself to the word. Submit yourself to fellowship. Are you ready now? When you want to emerge, you have to submit yourself to competence and to learning. This is the fourth thing. You will hardly hear this in church. Most times, once we talk about prayer and the word, we stop there. But you want to become a career and a manifesto of the glory of God. You must submit yourself to competence as touching your area of calling and election. Proverbs 22 and verse 29. The Bible says, See thou a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. Are we together? He shall not stand before mean men. Please say competence. One more time, say competence. There is a relationship between competence and excellence and the glory of God. It says, oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name. There are many people who submit themselves in truth to prayer. They submit themselves to the word. They submit themselves to fellowship. But they have not seen the value or the need to be competent. Competent in ministry, competent in career, competent in business. You are a preacher, don't come and stand. Let me tell you the truth. The world that we live in today has options. Nobody will come and submit to your spiritual leadership with a man who you are not sound in scripture. You are not even vast as to life because there are times you have to draw examples look at jesus he used parables from real life experiences you need in in your church are professors in your church are intellectuals nobody will come and make a fool of himself just coming to submit to nothing are we together no man will carry his wife and children and submit indefinitely and they are not learning learning and sound communication is a product of competence every scripture you quote is wrong even when you read it from the bible you are still reading what is wrong no no apostle god has called me to be a prophet stop moving around and embarrassing yourself learn the prophetic ministry sharpen yourself huh god has made you a teacher submit to doctrine get materials Go for training if need be. So that you are sound. When you are giving a sound exegesis of scripture. People listen to you. You are not communicating opinions. This is not just English. Apostle, I'm a businessman. Tell me what you know about business. All I want to make is money. No, sir. There are certain corridors of glory you will not get to. Are we together? Did you know that there are two people in scripture? Who rose to a position of influence. And for all of them, it was competence that took them there. Number one is Joseph. You find that in Genesis 40, 41, 42. Those two chapters. Talks about his final phases in the prison. Up to the time of his interpreting Pharaoh's dream. His eventual exaltation. He was exalted. And the Bible says he was given a wife to marry the daughter of of Potiphera, the priest of on and they gave him a name zafat tania they gave him a name a, an egyptian name and he became a great man he said i am pharaoh and only by your word will egypt be ruled can we find such a man so discreet and wise in whom the spirit of the gods is number two was daniel in babylon daniel was among the eunuchs that went into captivity and when you read Daniel 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, And Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's portion. Are we together? He was so sound in Daniel chapter 2. When you read from verse 28, now about to interpret the king's dream, the Bible says, Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. 
and you now begin to read you see that daniel was elevated he was exalted you want to see the extent of daniel's exaltation read daniel chapter 5 from verse 1 downwards and then daniel chapter 6 from verse 1 downwards that they decided to put precedence and out of them one of them was daniel and that he was such an exceptional person to a point that when the enemies of the kingdom wanted to find an occasion they could not trace it to incompetence they had to use prayer to trap daniel what a man make a covenant with yourself right now today whether you are a pastor whether you are a businessman that you will run away from incompetence i respect the fact that you are a man of prayer i respect the fact that you are a man of the word and respectfully speaking co-laborers in the vineyard can i encourage us and beseech us by the message of god let's stop wasting the time of god's people otherwise we'll be ready for empty pews in these last days because there are many alternatives there are many options that the opening of your mouth will be like the gates of wisdom being opened people look forward to listening to you ah he said oh that in i was in the days of my youth right when the secrets of the lord was upon my tabernacle and that by his light i i went through darkness the young men saw me and stood the old men saw me they refrained their mouths from speaking the excellency of wisdom i made up my mind as a covenant that is not just being anointed that that i will present to the world i will do my homework i will make sure by the grace of god i obtain grace to be competent i daniel understood by books the bible says to buy the truth and sell it not in the name of jesus i rebuke spiritual laziness in the name of jesus i rebuke intellectual laziness men of god let's prepare our sermons with diligence don't stand on the stage and it will be very clear you see members are not stupid people they know when you have not done your homework to the point that they will stop shouting amen to your prayers because there is a track record of prolonged unseriousness may you be so competent that people will come to learn god through you they listen to you as a businessman they want to they want to tap into your wisdom the bible says be wise as a serpent when it has to do with living and excelling in the cosmos you can even borrow the wisdom of the serpent you see there's no time i would have shown you from the life of the man we call abraham did you know that when it had to do with the matters of the altar and matters of spirituality abraham was powerful but he was ignorant and when god wanted him to understand that secular knowledge he took him to go and learn the wisdom is in your bible he took him to the house of abimelech he went there same thing with moses moses went to learn the wisdom of the egyptians most believers do not know that you need to have intelligence even of understanding the laws of life and the laws of destiny it's not just spiritual laws alone destiny and life has laws and systems do you understand organization do you understand leadership do you do you have people skills do you know how to coordinate systems to make them work you can have a church that comes because of the anointing you are in and you'll find out that it will become a place of confusion because there is no organization the first thing that came back to life in the dry bones of ezekiel are the skeletons skeletons talk of structure before god will give life to any organization the structure must be in place if you're with me say amen, amen. so number one prayer number two the ministry of the word number three corporate fellowship number four competence are you ready for number five you must submit yourself to character development character second peter chapter one please let's begin our reading from verse five character write it down if you want longevity of impact you want to be the vessel that hosts the glory of god for a long time neglect this and you do it at the peril the expense of your relevance second peter chapter 1 from verse 5 please look up everybody and besides this 
giving diligence out to everybody say out to out to that's right thank god for the ones you have but there is still something to add to he says add to your faith virtue moral excellence and to virtue knowledge verse 6 reading to 10 and to knowledge self-control and to self-control patience and to patience godliness seven and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity or love verse 8 if these things be in you including the ones you have added they make that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ verse 9 it says but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off for he had forgotten that he was purged of his old sins final verse 10 it says wherefore the rather brethren use these additions to give diligence so that you will make your calling and your election sure it says for if this if ye do these things what is the, the prophecy there ye shall never fall ye shall never fall ye shall never fall anybody praying for your downfall will only be wasting their time because in addition to this that if you can add that means no matter your spirituality your rema if you don't add character there is a problem with the longevity of your impact and unfortunately respectfully so many have become victims of this in the night i'm going to teach you on empowerment since we are doing the miracle service and i'll be teaching you that there are three things that follow mantles you see there are spiritual backings in terms of angels angelic activities that signify certain revelations according to revelation 1 verse 1 the revelation of jesus which he gave unto his servant john the bible says he sent it and signified it by his angel so there are angels that don't follow men they follow certain anointings for instance when thank god for your gracious protocol system we have people from the dss the military and all of this and, and i'm so thankful for you know their intelligence and i just sat back and watching all of them professionally communicating with themselves i think you should celebrate them now watch that if the governor of your state is to come here now in the capacity as a governor are we together there are certain people and certain military paraphernalia that comes with him they don't come to him as a person they follow the office so when certain mantles are on you i'm telling you three things i'm giving you a teaser for tonight number one is that there are certain angelic backings that follow you number two men will follow you but number three there are spirits that are attached not to men but attached to mantles demonic spirits now they don't follow men they have no business following you they follow whoever is the carrier of that mantle so if you are samson delilah starts looking for you not because you have any business with her she was assigned to follow whoever is samson hmm. say amen That is the reason why God does not answer certain prayers of more anointing. Do you know why? Because the battles that you are about to confront, you don't have the spiritual intelligence to maintain victory at that level. So God will love you by keeping you in that state until revelation comes. I went up by revelations. Galatians 2 and verse 2. And I went up by revelation. You don't go up by desire. It takes revelation. Are we learning? character please look at me character is very powerful because it sustains the ability to preserve that which god places on your life there are many many men of god there are many people who do not have character character over the lust of the eyes please look at me the bible categorizes them into three remember 
love not the world neither the things that are in this world the bible says if any man doesn't matter who you are loves the world he said the love of the father is not in you then he says all that is in the world and list categorizes them into three number one the lust of the flesh number two the lust of the eyes number three the pride of life everything that will bring you down is in these three categories what is the lust of the flesh the impulses that come to you by reason of wearing a more a mortal body gluttony moral deficiencies in terms of immorality all of these things are lust of the flesh that means if you did not have a body there will be no need i, I hope you know that yes the reason why you are in that kind of trouble is because you have a body then number two lust of the eyes the temptations and the impulses that come to you by reason of the power of sight covetousness is it not because you could see if you were blind hopefully you would have been safe but now that you have a pair of eyes you saw your colleague rising you saw his membership and bitterness and jealousy all of these things are product the side effect of having a pair of eyes that's why you must pray and sanctify your eyes that lord no matter what my eyes see in the name of jesus i will not allow the devil to midwife my sight and my heart between my eyes and my heart let the blood of jesus purge everything so that the elements of jealousy am i together now you can be as anointed as whatever what made saul want to kill david he saw that this young man had a great potential and the women now complicated the matter saul killed one thousand david killed ten thousand and saul said no no this guy must die and he used the javelin it took david having wisdom to run away can i tell you you must trust god to purge your eyes this unhealthy competition that exists among men of god and all kinds of things these eyes you see is a gift from god but these eyes can be a weapon of mass destruction there are people who went to hell today because of their eyes that's why the bible says if your eye causes you to sin it says pluck it out it doesn't mean remove remove it like this no you have to understand what the bible is saying are we together now to plug it out does not mean to remove it to plug it out means cause it to lose its strength and efficiency as far as partnering with the devil to destroy you is concerned when you pluck out your eyes it no longer works so he's talking about being dead to the flesh holistically and then number three the pride of life i hope you know that the pride of life is different from pride you cannot have the pride of life until you have results the pride of life is the self vain glorification that happens at the instance of provable results so the moment you have results be careful because you stand the risk of the pride of life this is what happened to the king in babylon he had results and he said build me a statue of myself 90 feet pure gold and everybody when you hear the sound of the instrument bow to that image and some hebrew boy said no we will not do this we love you we respect authority but in this matter we will not bow the pride of life can i tell you this keys I'm showing you will make you a great man of power, envied by darkness and envied by men. One of the assignments of character, and that includes humility, is to be able to guard you so that you remain. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory, you got the glory, you get the praise, you got the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you, thank you. So in my life, be glorified, be glorified. My life be glorified, be glorified. Listen, by the time you begin to prophesy, by the time revelation comes to you, 
and you are dishing out scripture after scripture look at me ladies and gentlemen by the time people begin to sing your praises joshua selman that is when you are closer to the corridors of destruction let me show you the position of a champion in this kingdom this is it you get the glory you get the praise you get the praise you take the honor you take the honor i just want to say thank you thank listen you. there are men immorality could not bring them down there are men money could not bring them down there are men that jealousy could not bring them down but the one thing that pushed them freely was pride and thou shalt say in thy heart that my power and the might of my hand has given me this no man can receive anything except it is given unto him pastors let us stop some of these statements that we make on stage that makes it look like we are mm -mm, be careful i know we came from backgrounds where maybe nobody believed in you by the time you make it you want to rub it in it's unnecessary your assignment is to see jesus glorified some of these statements we make in the name of cliches of ministry the jealous one is watching and let me tell you god can give you something and still fight it if he tries to take his place there are many many battles people are fighting that is not by demons that's why the anointing cannot solve it because the anointing was not designed designed to fight god the anointing only fights what is against God. But if God is the one fighting you, which anointing are you going to use to fight him? Is it not in your Bible that God opposes? What does it mean to oppose? You know how powerful God is? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Listen. This is my final charge. You want to last let me show you a powerful key in all your getting get humility ah in all your getting get humility don't stand and tell me listen look at me if i arrange women or men and i put money and i put pride i know most of you would think the highest to overcome is the first one it may not be true some of you may think the highest, the most difficult to overcome is money. It may not be true. Let me tell you the truth. The highest victory of the believer is in the place of conquering pride. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Is that in your Bible? That though he was equal with God, he did not consider it robbery, but he humbled himself. When God begins to do mighty things with you, it is not unusual for men to sing your praises. You become an admiration to everybody. Listen, the person talking to you is not in ignorance. I know what I'm saying. You see, Ba, when the glory of God comes upon your life, if men can, they will even worship you. It takes you knowing, huh? and letting men know that thank God for the things you are doing but for God's sake there is one mightier than I John got it well initially I don't know what happened to him later on he said that I may decrease that he may increase there are pastors here and there are many people here by this teaching this morning God is revealing to you that this is what has stopped you this is why the church started going down this is why it looked like the anointing and the grace nothing was happening again because humility is a mysterious lifter what is humility humility is not denying the obvious humility is not denying the hand of god when the hand of god is upon you it is upon you if you are blessed you are blessed if god has lifted you you are lifted humility is not denying that don't confuse humility with simplicity if you bring me a bottle of water and you bring me a bag of pure water i will drink the bottle of water i'm not going to drink the bag of pure, uh, water as a side that's not humility no no are we together let me tell you what true humility is acknowledging jesus as the basis the reason for all that you are 
and then using that position to glorify him that is humility my car my church my anointing let's be careful owners are rebels in this kingdom nobody owns anything we are stewards in this kingdom please listen to me and the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful i'm saying this because after the impartation tonight some of you will be carrying mysterious graces you will move like wildfire across yola but i'm giving you a word of caution now so that when people look at you as are you a human being with these kinds of miracles happening in your hand don't make the mistake that men anyway let me keep quiet there but there was one of god's generals that made this mistake he got to a point where because of the excellency of the workings of the spirit in his life people started calling him certain names and at a point it got into him I pray all the time and I tell God walk on my heart I don't even know the tendencies that are in my heart don't sit down and say me I can never be proud how much do you have where have you gone to you see there are some things that is the talk of foolish people I'm not insulting you I'm just being sincere there are certain levels of glory that when you see sometimes you have to stop yourself from entering it intentionally because of the state of your heart hallelujah there are men of god as soon as they return from overseas they said i would never suffer like this again i'm not a fool i've suffered from birth i suffered while god was training me and now that i went to america look at what happened ah uh, no i won't go back to um yesterday or you know egypt or whatever name you call it and that becomes the beginning of compromise humility i prayed a prayer to the lord years ago and i'm still praying it now even as i'm standing on stage i said lord may i never know the extent of my impact in the lives of people it is not necessary let me just know that by the privilege of god's grace you are using my life to bless people but never allow me know how far the grace you have placed upon my life is blessing people and god answered that prayer lest i be overtaken by pride because it's a human thing look when you are honest with yourself you are ready to, to experience the mercy of God but once you put yourself in this big man position no I can't do anything me oh I'm seeing women like trees I'm seeing money like paper all those lies is why the devil destroys people are we together this morning a broken and a contrite heart oh God that will not despise I'm already giving us the prayer point for this morning because for a few minutes we are going to cry before the lord and say search my heart and try my thoughts oh god i do not know the tendencies that are locked up in my heart lest i become a disaster to myself and a disaster to others pride pride has destroyed many businesses there was a man in the bible called a rich fool those are two words that don't go together because wealth is a product of wisdom I don't know how he became a rich fool what was the foolishness he built barns and put his wealth there and said my soul find rest and the Lord said nay for today your soul is required of you ladies and gentlemen hear me I've presented to you these templates these are the templates that those who went before us have followed and have lasted they have stood the test of time let me recap one last time and then we begin to pray please make sure you participate in the prayer number one the ministry of strategic and systemic prayer giving yourself to prayer as a routine number two the ministry of the word a careful study of doctrine where you hide the word in your heart and with it you learn the ways of god number three the power of corporate fellowship receiving the multifaceted investments of the spirit as given to the body of christ are we together number four what's number four yes competence as far as your area of call and election is concerned 
you are in the fivefold give yourself to be competent in that area you are in business any of the mountains at all you are in media you are a worshiper don't come and stand and sing and forget what you are saying three of you are singing only you is singing the third verse the remaining two have kept quiet because you did not rehearse you did not practice are we together They should be able to wake you up as a man of God and give you a mic to speak in a conference for one week and you should not be ashamed because the Bible mandates to be instant in season and out of season. And then number five, character. Chiefest among them is humility. Most other character destroying traits partner with pride to walk. Pride is an accelerator of any evil at all. Anything plus pride becomes the worst version of it foolishness plus pride becomes a higher version of foolishness laziness excuse me plus pride becomes a wicked version of laziness pride accelerates any dimension of evil in your life show me a man that has anything wrong in his life but with humility is quick to identify that person and show him mercy thou son of david i am sick but i'm not too proud have mercy on me and salvation came but the scribes and the pharisees they were around every one of jesus's crusade yet they were never blessed by it they were the earliest to come because there was no record of them sitting outside even when there was a crowd yet they were never transformed by the word they were just listening to the mistakes that you would say then they will ask foolish questions now that you have said this let's ask the question which one is better to forgive sins or to raise it's all kinds of questions You want to become mighty. You want to take Yola for Jesus. You may have heard my teaching on revivals. And I did this one in a just concluded conference in the UK also. I taught that revival is threefold. The first and most important part of revival is personal. Remember the church in Pagamos, the church in Smyrna, the church in Philadelphia, the church in Ephesus. Every one of those churches had commendations and they had things that the Spirit of God observed. Okay, you have done well in this, but this, return to your first love. You can get it in the message, the purified church. You listen to it and pray. That is a real revival tool. The washing of the water even by the word. When it comes to this issue of consecration, there are no generals there. You die daily. There are generals of faith. There are generals of power. But when it has to do with working with God and submitting and dying daily, nobody calls himself a general there. It's only a liar that says I'm a general. Are we together? The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He was speaking to believers. This is John's epistle. So the earlier your heart is open before God and you go for a retreat, Lord, I found out that in the last one week, there's an unusual desire for money. This loss for money it looks like my mind has started drifting away show me mercy that's it the blood comes to speak father it looks like jealousy and pride is already growing in me the day i saw that man of god or saw that woman of god something happened is from the sincerity of my heart it's as a product of the background i came from show me mercy and the mercy of god comes you may also want to listen to my message on the mercy of God. Not everybody is a candidate of God's mercy. No. The mercy of God has requirements to walk in your life. You find that in Psalm 51. 51 was the confession of David. When David, remember David together with the prophet, after he killed Uriah and they opened up his sin to him, he cried before God. We have to stop here. Is someone ready to cry before the Lord? We have the next five minutes. I leave you with your maker. For the next five minutes, I want you to cry. I don't know what position fits you. But in the next, please, no moving around. Let's respect God. The next five minutes. The helper of man. 
the helper of man the helper of man someone pray repent of prayerlessness repent of carelessness repent of spiritual laxity Please pray, just a few minutes. Take my heart and mold it. Take my mind transform it take my will conform it to yours to yours oh lord to yours to yours Lord, I hand over the ministry. I hand over my reputation. Thank you for the anointing you have given me. But I declare in the name of Jesus that it belongs to you. Hand over your life afresh again to him. Just two more minutes. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Please pray one more minute. You're praying. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead me, I will follow. And I have made a choice that I will listen for your voice wherever you may lead, I will go. Hallelujah. 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 We're wrapping up. This is how great men are made. Carry this formula and apply it to any member in your church who submits you will find power i want to speak a word to someone and then we'll be done for today and prepare for tonight i sense in my heart that there are men of god here there are women of god there are people who may not be in ministry who have been broken listen carefully and are disappointed some of you have served god sincerely with integrity of heart but it looks like this finances is not answering. Some of you, maybe your homes, maybe some of you, your children, and people even look at you and point and say, can you imagine this? What a good man, but see the kind of useless children that he has. Some of you are trusting God for money, maybe to build your church, to be able to have a place of your own. I have a word for you, and I want you to listen. This is what God said I should tell you. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. I'm not singing. He walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for you 
and he will be your God holds you closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way my God will make a way let me prophesy one more time my God will make a way pray for the sick and nothing happened you call for a sincere meeting I've prayed for dead bodies that did not come back to life I walked out of that place sincerely you're not the first to be disappointed you called upon the name of the Lord in the meeting and you left in shame don't worry there is a walk in he's doing in you you told everybody God prospers and your landlord drove you out the church building and your house building in the presence of everybody and people looked at you and said go and walk on yourself this is my final word it may not be for everybody but I'm speaking to someone I perceive in my spirit that there are many leaders here some of you have been fought by people you have been called names and you are saying what is it because I answered the call some of you may not even know what to do now you are even about to give up to say this ministry I'm tired honestly some of you married men and women of God you are about to regret because it looked like you had a better life and you now came to rubbish yourself can I tell you you never go down with God you can fail alone but you cannot fail with God you cannot fail with God take it down for me let me comfort somebody before we close will you hold on through the storm listen to me please hold on to his word your life will soon reveal he's the lifter of men the lifter of men man of god hear me will you hold on through the storm will you hold on to his word even though you are crying your story is about to change by the lifter of men the lifter of men many years ago nobody knew me then I was invited to go for a meeting I prayed I fasted it was raining the meeting was not very far from my house and the people were waiting for me I had a choice to just stay back there or to walk towards the meeting and I said Lord for you not for any name I carried my Bible and I stepped out in that rain and while the rain was beating me I was going with joy eventually I got a bike and I climbed that bike when I got to the church they did not even keep a seat for me it was when I got there that the people just pushed someone you know I just came in and they dressed people and kept the seat there I was drenched but I was happy and then they acted drama they sang they rapped they did all kinds of things and then when it was the time to come and preach they just passed a little paper and said please because of time let me just walk with 10 or 15 minutes and you are imagining after praying and all of that that was a pruning and a making by God working on your character and I finished with all my heart those days when you finish praying I didn't even know there was something called honorarium and then the way they honor you is as if you tell them to go because it's until you climb the bike first then you see 2a you know this 2a exercise book that they tear half of it they just put something no no please god bless you all right no problem well when you come just just do that on the ground eh? the lord honor you thank you i really feel embarrassed for these kinds of things my apologies please carry drop it in your film basket thank you hallelujah and step by step there were times where they would invite me and they did not even know how i arrived there but i still went gradually I'm comforting you because don't abort something precious that is being birthed because of offense. I went to preach somewhere they did not, or I'm a pastor and they said, well, we have a brother here. Come and preach. Don't worry. It does not kill anything. It was a time to sing and they invited every other person and then they gave you five minutes. They said, please, can you just raise, if it's three verses, sing one. No problem. Go and sing it. It's an honor to serve the king. 
serve him with all your heart because when you are faithful in little you are faithful in much in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit that for many of you you begin your journey from today that reveals the glory of god upon your life shout a loud amen I decree and I declare that as you begin to walk in keeping with these mysteries that of prayer that of the word that of fellowship that of competence and that of character even humility may a new you begin to evolve may a powerful you begin to evolve may you that is full of wisdom begin to evolve may the glory of God rise so marvelously upon your life may you become a man to be wondered at may you become a praise even to the nations in the name of jesus christ now for tonight let me encourage you let me let my voice with his lordship the bishop to encourage you tonight who we'll have the time to be ministering to people is a miracle and an impartation service that is when you'll be receiving there's no time now to begin to do any impartation please i want you to invite particularly men and women of god let them come when god sends a word to jacob it is because he wants it to be lightened upon israel are we together now that we stand here ministering does not mean we are better than anybody it's just the, the privilege of the grace of god and that which god gives is for the edification of the body corporately hallelujah so invite your loved ones those who are hungry and crying invite your memberships whether there's no space inside if you have to sit on the roof sit there but make sure your heart is open to receive to be delivered from every kind of yoke and as i will always do at the permission of his lordship may i request that you come with your prayer request or some of the ushers you can have a, maybe a prayer whatever it is so that people can write their prayer requests the bible says unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come will be lifting up a a cry to heaven to visit families and to speak over the territory of Yola because it's a new season and it's a time of birthing the new. It's a time for a new dimension of the glory of God to come. For now, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you